Hey, it's Tim here. In today's video, I'm gonna be taking on the second key concept we need to understand before we look at LODs, and that is the order of operations. Now, I've deliberately called this video an introduction to order of operations because I can't cover everything I could possibly cover with order of operations in the length that I normally make videos. So what I'll do is I'll introduce you to the concept of order of operations, show you an example of how it works, show you some documentation of places you can go to to read more about it, but also give you a link to some video content that you can go and watch on YouTube by Tableau that gets into it in a lot of detail that gives you lots of examples and lots of different types of contexts that you can sort of get stuck into, okay? So let's start with order of operations. Let's get stuck in. Okay, so before I actually start, I'm going to actually go to the web page. I'm not going to uh, start in Tableau. And we're going to start on a maths web page. I actually Googled um, the order of operations in maths because um, the Tableau order of operations has basically the same sort of concept. Essentially, the order of operation in maths pretty much dictates the order in which you do certain things in order to get the right number when you do a mathematical calculation. Now, in Tableau, when you're working with that, it actually does calculations in a specific order when it's working with data. And so what I've already got open here is another tab that essentially describes the order of operations. I'm gonna link this page in the documentation and in the description below, so be sure to check it out. And there's also this video here that's referenced in the documentation from just a couple of years ago. If you right click on that, open it in a new tab, you'll see it's also another YouTube video. So it's very easy to sort of go to. I'll also do a pop up on the screen now to this video so you can find out. And you can see here, it's got lots of really interesting examples uh, that you can get to. And it's uh, quite a recent video in Tableau terms. It's only from version 2018.2, but many of the things have probably stayed the same and the order of operations hasn't really updated that much. Now, the order of operations simply dictates the order in which Tableau processes data, okay? So the best way to think about it is that it starts from the top. And so the first thing it will check is, do we have any extract filters? And essentially, if there's any extract filters, it will apply those filters. And then the next thing it will check is if there's any data source filters, okay? And then after checking that, it will go to the next thing, context filters. And if there's no context filters, then it goes to the next thing. Now, on this left-hand side here, you can see these are essentially filters. So everything on this left-hand side is some sort of filter. But on the right-hand side, we have what are considered sort of calculations. So you have sets, which are sort of groupings, conditional filters, which um, can be applied um, using a bunch of conditions, top end and fixed level of detail calculations, happen in between context filters and dimensional filters. And so the important thing here is that in some instances, you'll get into situations in Tableau where you could swear you've set up the view correctly, but actually you're not getting the right number and some weird behavior is happening. That, For example, it could be keeping um, the wrong set of values when it should be returning you, you know, just a simpler set of values from a subset of your data rather than the whole data set. And so by manipulating where you put your calculations in this order of operations, you can achieve slightly different things. And so it's just good to be aware of all the different devices you've got available to you because I think once you sort of understand this you don't have to understand it in depth you just have to know that it's happening in the background and when a situation pops up you'll instantly look for situations in which you can solve this so um, it's really really important to sort of be aware of it so if i keep going down here you'll see dimensional filters then include and exclude level of details we'll be covering these very soon data blending then measure filters then forecast table counts clusters and totals then table count filters, then trend lines and reference lines. So trend lines and reference lines are absolutely the last thing that are always computed. And the very first thing is the extract filters, okay? So let's hop into Tableau and I'll give you a, set, a very simple example to show you how this is working in a very different context. And you can follow along and set this up yourself in Tableau, um, but we're gonna sort of take our time with this. We're gonna make sure we set it up correctly, okay? So the first thing I'll do is I'll go into Superstore Sales. I'm going to select the second one, which is the American data source. And we're going to bring sales onto the view. I'm going to put it onto columns. Uh, that will give us um, essentially uh, sales going across the screen. And then the next thing I'm going to bring is the subcategory out of the product hierarchy. And we're just going to put this here like so. Okay. And then we're going to filter this like this. So we have phones, shares, storage, tables, and binders. Okay. 
Now, the next thing I'd like to do is to bring in a state. So I'm going to go into the state hierarchy here and I'm just going to bring in the state and I'm going to put it in front of subcategory. So essentially, we can see here a couple of things. Alabama, the top category, top subcategories, chairs, machines and phones. OK, so those are the top three uh, categories. OK, so let me go ahead and remove uh, that again. I just want to sort of and I'll highlight that fact to you that Alabama chairs, machines and phones. OK. So let's go back in here and let's just apply a top three filter on just the subcategory. So let's go ahead and do that and bring subcategory onto filters. OK, and then you'll get this sort of filter pane and we can hop into this, go to the very end, select top, select top three. And it's going to be using the top three based on sum of sales to return just the top three values. OK, and then I'm going to hit apply and you'll see here that phones, chairs and storage are actually the top three. Now. Depending on how I've set this up and depending on the kind of question I'm working with, if I then go and bring the state into this filter, one thing you might do is you might expect the top end filter to work even if I've got Alabama selected. So what we should expect to see is that machines should at least be in the top three in Alabama because we validated that right before. So let's go ahead and click apply on Alabama and you'll see here that the orders change, but we don't get the right top three. We get chairs, phones, and storage. But if we go to our view again, and let's just very quickly build like a validation data set. Let's uh, bring state in in front of subcategory, bring sales onto columns, uh, keep only Alabama and sort this. We should see chairs, machines, and phones. So why is it that on this chart, the top three items are chairs, phones, and storage. And on this chart, it's chairs, machines, and phones even though we've got Alabama in the filter and we've got category in the filter as well, just selecting the top three. Well, the issue here is order of operations. And so if we think about what we've done here, if we open up this filter, we're using a top N calculation in here. Okay. So we're using a top three calculation and we're using it in the filters pane. Okay. So the way this works is that the top N is actually at a higher level of um, the order of operations compared to our dimensional filter for the state of Alabama. Let me show you this in the order of operations diagram. So if I go in here, you'll see that I have context filters, sets, conditional filters and top N. So right here, this is basically what's going on. This top N function is happening before my dimensional filter for Alabama. OK, and so what we need to do is to somehow move our dimensional filter for Alabama above the top end function so that it first filters for Alabama, then it calculates the top three in the particular setup that we have. OK, and so we've got a couple of devices to do that. Essentially, we look at where our dimensional filter. So our dimensional filter, I'm just going to highlight where it is in green is here. So essentially, we've got some options and we need to move it further up this order of operations. And so the very easiest thing we can do if we're only interested in Alabama is we can just add Alabama to one of the extract filters or the data source filters. Now, I'm not doing an extract in this particular view. We didn't take an extract. So uh, for this one, I'm just going to revert to using a data source filter to show you that this works. So let's go back into the view and let's kind of clean out this and uh, let's close this. And so I'm not going to change my subcategory top end. We're just going to keep that as is. And then what I'm going to do is right click on the data source, go to my data source filters, and then I'm just going to filter to the state Alabama. So let's go get the state field, uh, select OK, just select Alabama, click OK, and then click OK again. And now you'll see it's chairs, machines and phones. OK, so now the data source filter is applying the filter that we were applying here above the top end function. So I can actually safely remove the state Alabama filter and you'll see nothing changes because the filtering is now happening above our top end calculation. So if I just go back here to our, our view, let's annotate, annotate it one more time. Our top end function is here. And now what we've done is we've moved our Alabama filter into the data source filter. OK, the next thing we can do is we can remove it from the data source filters and I can actually put it inside of the context filter. This is another type of filter which just allows you to get some separation between the dimensional filters and the data source filters. The problem with the data source filters is it removes everything from the data source. So you can't look at any other aspects. So if I wanted to look at another state, I wouldn't be able 
to look at it essentially because I've removed it from the data source that I'm working with. It hasn't been deleted, it's just not available in the queries when Tableau looks at it because I've put a filter saying don't do that. So the context filter is a little bit more powerful because what it allows us to do is it allows us to essentially remove Alabama from this view, but just in this particular sheet, I'm actually able to specify that Alabama should go above the top end function. Okay, so let's go ahead and select state and place that in there. Select Alabama, click OK. It's exactly the same as before. We get the same wrong answer as before. But this time I'm going to right click on Alabama, select add to context, and you'll see that it goes gray. So it goes gray because it's now a context filter. So context filters are typically gray. And what that actually means is that Tableau is first applying the context filters, then applying any other top end functions, then applying other dimensional filters. So if we exit out of this again and go back to this view, you can see that now what we've done is we've applied a context filter here, and then we've got our top end function happening after the context filter. And that means we now get the right answer if we filter to Alabama inside of the filters pane, okay? And so this is order of operations working. Essentially, we're manipulating the point at which a calculation is done to help us get the right answer to the question we're asking. And so often a lot of the times what will happen is you'll be sort of getting frustrated in Tableau, just going, look, why is it just not doing what I want it to do? And actually it's doing exactly what you want it to do. It just has a set of rules that you have to follow. And that is essentially the order of operations. Okay. Now I can't stress enough. This diagram should be like the holy grail. Like, in fact, if you've never heard of this concept for the next week, set this as your wallpaper, honestly, because it's that important. It's going to be the thing that you realize uh, has made some of your visualizations in the past just really difficult to work with, or actually it's made the performance of some of what you're doing really, really slow because you've not realized that actually you can move certain filters higher up the data source so they're not even computed later on and vice versa. Okay, so it's a really important concept just to start to understand. And Tableau have great documentation on this. I'm always uh, going to be praising Tableau's documentation because I think it's actually really good. I use it myself. Uh, I, I literally read it. I learn as much of it as I can, and then I come and make videos for you guys. So um, it's really, really good content. And some of it has been around for ages. You can actually look at these images. You'll know these are done in a very old version of Tableau. I think I'm going to call this as version seven or six of Tableau because it's just before the new interface was designed. And so this is actually the version that I learned Tableau with, version seven. So um, this documentation has been around for a really, really long time, but it's frequently updated. So here it's uh, been updated for 2020.4. And as and when they add new features, especially when we look at things like the data model, it's really important that you keep tuning in, okay? So once again, I'm gonna stress a few things on this page. Uh, be sure to check out the video here. It's got a nice, really long one hour session that goes into lots of examples. It's a little bit long, it might be a little bit dry, but it's a really fundamental concept to get your head around. And then the next thing you wanna do is really get familiar with this uh, diagram. This is really important to sort of get your head around. And lastly, uh, I'm sure I'm not the first to do a video on um, uh, context filters. So be sure to look in YouTube for other people who've done great videos on context filter. They've mostly been at conference, if I'm honest. So look out for Tableau conference sessions on context filters and level of detail calculations in general. And then you'll find lots of information about order of operations and the other sort of things that uh, are related to that as well. So it's a really important concept. Um, just get stuck in. Um, but the reason I'm doing this video is so that we can now start to do LODs um, starting tomorrow. So um, hopefully you now understand this. Now, when I go through LODs, I will go through this again. So don't worry, I'm not going to leave you hanging. I will reinforce this as we look at the LOD videos. Uh, but that's it for today. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Um, hit the like button, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. Let me know what you've enjoyed about this content. Let me know what you didn't like as well in the comments below. And I'll catch you in the next video.